Hello everyone, my name is Jun Gong. I am a research scientist at Apple. Today we are going to talk about MetaSense, integrating sensing capabilities into mechanical metamaterial. This work was done during my visit at HCI Engineering Group at MIT CSEL in collaboration with Olivia, Cedric, Jack, and Stephanie. Before we talk about motivation and related work, I want to show you quickly what MetaSense is and how it works. MetaSense is a method to integrate sensing capabilities into 3D printable metamaterial structures. On the right-hand side, we printed a joystick with MetaSense used as a controller for this Pac-Man game. As you can see here, we can measure the direction. The Pac-Man is moving up and down, left and right, as we are moving the joystick. Let's take a closer look at the joystick. It consists of four pairs of conductive walls printed using copper-looking conductive filament. These opposing conductive walls within the joystick act like electrodes, creating capacitive sensors to sense the directions. When a user interacts with the joystick and applies a force to the right, the distance between two highlighted opposing cell walls will increase, which leads to a capacitance decrease. Similarly, when a user applies a force to the left, the distance between two cell walls will decrease, which leads to a capacitance increase. We use a capacitive sensor to measure the capacitance variation and interpret user's interaction. And this is how MetaSense works. To help designers create interactive metamaterial devices, we created a design fabrication pipeline based on multi-material 3D printing. Our 3D editor can automatically place conductive cells in the locations that are most affected by the deformation during interaction, just like this video shows. We will share more details about implementations and applications later in this talk, but before that, Let's start with the related work. We are early working in personal fabrication focused on designing the outside of the objects. Recently, researchers started to also consider the internal structure of objects. Here are several examples. They divided the inside of the objects into grids of cells and modified the parameters of the cells to achieve various mechanical properties. This so-called mechanical metamaterial can make objects harder or softer or more or less flexible. At the same time, Researchers also investigated how to integrate different types of sensing elements into mechanical metamaterials by manually applying conductive ink or liquid metal to the passive structure to create digital switches and logic gates. In our work, we explore how to go beyond sensing discrete states by developing an approach to add continuous deformation sensing to mechanical metamaterials. That's a quick overview of the related work. I will now leave the floor to Olivia to talk about sensing principles. Thanks, Jun. 3D printed conductive plates within the structure of metamaterial mechanisms pick up capacitance during interaction, allowing the device to act as a sensor. Capacitance between two parallel plates is defined by this equation, where epsilon naught is the dielectric constant of air, A is the overlapping area between the two plates, and D is the distance between them. If the two plates are not completely aligned, the overlapping area decreases, resulting in a smaller capacitance. And if the two plates are further apart, the distance increases, also resulting in a smaller capacitance. In this video, we see a simple metamaterial mechanism which was printed in one go. The walls in gold can sense capacitance. As the mechanism is deformed, the capacitance changes, as reflected in the visualization. The device is connected to a capacitive sensing board, FDC2214. This is a resonance frequency sensor, which allows us to better detect minute and noisy capacitance changes due to the small cell walls, poor conductive materials, and weak connections. Capacitance is calculated from the sensed frequency and known inductance using this equation. The goal during the design process is to estimate the corresponding capacitances of each cell if that location comprised of conductive walls. Here we see two possible capacitance sensor locations in black. The position that has a wider capacitance range would be the more optimal location as a sensor. As explained, capacitance variation is related to distance D and area A. The more these two values change, the bigger the delta. However, when a mechanism deforms, computation of A and D are not always straightforward, as the deformation of the four vertices on a deformed cell wall may not be coplanar. Let's talk about how we approximate the distance and overlapping area between opposing plates for distance d. 
We sum original Euclidean distances between the four opposing vertices and calculate the absolute difference between that and the Euclidean distances between the deformed vertices. As for the new area A, this is also tricky because the deformed vertices may no longer be coplanar. As shown in grey, we find the best fit plane for each quad of vertices using singular value decomposition. We then project values from opposing best fit planes onto the same plane as shown on the right, and then calculate the resulting overlapping area as shown in blue using the sutherland hodgman polygon clipping algorithm. This allows us to estimate the overlapping area for plugging into the capacitance equation, shown again here. To design conductive metamaterial, designers can use the Metasense JavaScript-based editor. Our system builds on the editor created by the authors of the metamaterial devices paper. Similar to theirs, this editor is powered by a Grasshopper plugin called Karamba. Designers first use a familiar brush interaction to place cells. They can then add anchor points, which represent where the mechanism will be held in place. Then, they can apply a force vector to simulate a deformation. As shown in grey, conductive cells are then placed in theoretically optimal locations using the principles described earlier. Here we can see the theoretical capacitances for each cell during deformation. While the capacitive plates of a conductive shear cell should be flat for optimal capacitance approximation, the remaining walls can be customized based on desired mechanical properties. These configurations can be created using the custom panel in the editor. Now, Sajik will go over the fabrication process and some demo applications. Thanks, Olivia. All right, let's build the musical controller. For the structure, we can start with solid cells. Then we can add some flexible cells, and we can convert some of them into conductive cells to measure deformations. We then export two STL files, one for the flexible material and the other for the conductive material. Here, we use a dual head 3D printer, which is faster. Once the printing is done, we can wire the conductive cells into the sensing board. We can connect these electrodes to the four inputs, but a multiplexer can be used to connect more electrodes. Okay, characterization time now. Let's visualize capacitance as a function of the deformation. We chose five different sizes and printed five of each. The dimensions here represent the distance between the conductive plates the top graph represents the behavior of the biggest cell, 25 millimeter. The bottom graph is the smallest cell, 5 millimeter. One picofarad is the minimum that our sensing board can measure. So five, 5 millimeter cells are the smallest possible here. Let's explore some use cases. The musical controller takes advantage of continuous measurements of the four inputs, but the joystick uses a different approach, which is differential, to compute X and Y positions for four electrodes. This DIY accelerometer can measure its orientation and vibrations. It uses a differential approach as well. This other joystick is more dynamic, but it takes much longer to print. Here, we implemented a bistable switch with a compliant mechanism. And this other joystick visualization illustrates well the rotations that can be measured, but this rotation sensor is exactly made for that. Finally, we implemented a scale using the simplest sensing cell. To summarize, Metasense offers a simple way to 3D print monolithic sensing interfaces. We demonstrated how our customized tool allows placing conductive cells to build these interfaces. And we illustrated these possibilities with various degrees of complexity from simple binary sensing to multi-channel continuous sensing. We really hope to see you experiment with Metasense and thank you very much for listening to this presentation.